So how do people present with the condition of PSC? Well, a fair number, four out of 10 people, uh, present with no symptoms. They often are being seen uh, within a clinic. Uh, they have ulcerative colitis. For some reason, their gastroenterologist checks liver function tests. Perhaps they've been put on a new drug, often azathioprine, and they're found to have abnormal liver tests, and that leads to other investigations and then finding PSC. However, a, a significant majority can present with symptoms, and they can be uh, tiredness, itching, uh, losing weight, pain here, uh, and, and of course the infections that go uh, with, with primary sclerosing cholangitis due to infective bile. bile. Um, how do we make the diagnosis? Well, I was thinking about this. I mean, when people get referred uh, to our clinical setting, what do we do? Well, the first thing we do is we make sure the diagnosis is correct. Um, and, and it's important that uh, you, you take a, f a careful, careful history. You ask about things like a family history. Um, you, look at, you look at blood tests. We do extensive immunological testing as well to exclude other conditions. Uh, patients will have something called an MRI scan, and that, an MRCP. And what that does is that looks at the bile ducts, uh, and, and, and we can see that stricturing uh, within the bile ducts. Some people have a liver biopsy, but not all. That's, that's not uh, necessary to make uh, the diagnosis. Um, and of course, as I said, we need to make sure about uh, the coexisting inflammatory bowel disease and make sure that diagnosis is correct. So I think it's very key when, when, a, when a, a patient comes to the clinic first is to make sure the patient has got primary sclerosis and cholangitis and there's not something else going on. Because they obviously, it's, it's, it, as with all aspects of medicine, if you get that diagnosis wrong initially, that leads down all sorts of, uh, of, of, of paths. So after confirming the diagnosis, what do we then think in clinic? Well, I think the next thing that is helpful for ourselves and yourselves is to stage the disease. Now, um, staging the disease can, can be difficult. But we try and do that a number of ways. We use imaging, so we use uh, the MRCP, we use the ultrasound, so that looks at the shape of the liver. Uh, the shape of the liver can be important. If the shape is all abnormal, that can suggest it's quite scarred. Uh, and we can look at the extent of, of strictures within, within the liver as well. We, we are now regularly doing something called a fibro scan on patients. I don't know how many people have had a fibro scan probably a fair number here, yeah, yeah. I think you can probably all say it's a, a, thankfully a very painless test compared to a liver biopsy uh, uh, and a big step forward. It's, it's, not, it's not a perfect test for PSC, but I think it gives us a guide. I think a very low score can suggest, it can help us because it suggests that that patient has got very minimal scarring, whereas a high score does suggest a lot of scarring within the liver. In between scores, I think it's more difficult to say exactly what they mean, but it's helpful to ask. Yes, question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, we, we extrapolate from other conditions, and I would say a score under seven is a reassuring score that there's very mi little or minimal fibrosis. And then there's kind of intermediate scores there, thereafter up, 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 and then you can go up to as high as, you know, in the 40s for people with, 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 with cirrhosis or extensive scarring, okay? I think it's the, the ones in the middle that we find more difficult to, to know exactly what they mean. <coughs> An INR is a, a clotting test. If, you're li if your liver is really sick, that can go up. But you'll mention, remember I mentioned earlier about something called vitamin K. If you're not absorbing enough vitamin K, that will also push your INR up. And it can be just as simple as giving someone some intravenous vitamin K can bring that down. So a raised iron arm doesn't mean your liver's failing, not always. It might just mean you're not absorbing enough vitamin K. We also look at uh, how, how jaundiced a patient is with a bilirubin. We look at things like albumin. Uh, that can be helpful about uh, liver function. And we, we can do scores. We can do things like a UKELD score, a MELD score, a CHILD score that gives us an idea of how severe someone's liver disease is Within, within the clinical setting. So I, I think armed with all that information, we can hopefully then say to a patient, you know, 
this is how much scarring there is in the liver, this is how much stricturing disease there is, this is how, how your liver is functioning. And we can have conversations about what we think is going to happen over ne the next coming, uh, coming years. Uh, and I think that's very important. The, 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 the final treatment that we're obviously heavily involved here in a number of other centres is transplantation. And we often get asked, when do you start to think about transplantation? The first point is we always start to think about transplantation as early as possible. The worst thing is to be referred late for a transplant. You do, you know, because that gives us a, a short amount of time as a transplanting team. And so we start to try and think about transplant. If people are running into problems with their liver, they're starting to collect fluid. Um, um, they're having things like variceal bleeds or getting confusion from their liver disease. So it's what we call decompensated liver disease. And if someone's bilirubin is really persistently high and, and there's really nothing we can do about that, and that's again a, a, a worry for us as well. So they're the kind of warning signs for us. It's not that we'd assess all of those people, but they're the things that, that really start to get us worried in the clinic and, and get us concerned about uh, and whether we should be thinking about transplantation.